Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 2nd of November and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 6th of November and once again we're coming off a week of new record highs for the German DAX, the um, S&P 500 US markets in general and we've also seen a new 20 year high in the Nikkei 225. Central bank policy still remains fairly accommodative, uh, the US Federal Reserve kept rates unchanged um, in November um, but they did slightly upgrade their outlook for the US economy um, which makes it much more likely that we will probably see a Federal Reserve rate hike in December this year just over just over a month from now before that we have the small matter of non-farm payrolls which is due out on Friday the 3rd of November so obviously I don't have sight of those numbers yet but that could also obviously play a very big part in how markets move and how the dollar moves in particular over the course of the next week or so. Uh, just give a brief synopsis of what we're expecting for those numbers. Expecting a number in the region of 300,000 for non-farm payrolls and that's really as a, sub that's as a result really of the 33,000 decline that we saw in the September numbers. Uh, more importantly I think will be the number for wage growth that jumps up to 2.9 in September. I expect that to drop back a little bit to 2.7 but what I don't expect these numbers to do is really undermine the case for a US rate rise. And we've also got visibility now on the new head of the Federal Reserve. The person to replace Janet Yellen as Fed Chief next year It's likely to be Jerome Powell. He's likely to be confirmed uh, in the course of the next few hours. So looking slightly ahead, obviously we're looking at the German DAX and we can see that that's hit record highs. The euro has broken below a very, very key um, a neckline support level around about 116.17. It remains to be seen whether or not this particular breakout that we've seen gets confirmed over the course of the rest of the week because the non-farm payrolls numbers could really change the optics with respect to this particular move over the course of the next few days. Any move and close back above 117 is likely to be um, it's likely to be fairly damaging to the bearish case, but as long as we don't break above this trend line here, then I'm, I'm still of the opinion that we will see a lower euro and a slightly stronger dollar. Same sort of thing with dollar yen. Dollar yen is around about 114.40, which is a very key resistance level. Again, I think if we get a move through 114.40, we could see further gains in dollar yen, and that in turn will take the Nikkei 225 already. Um, above the 22,000 level, but probably close to the 23,000 level over the course of the next few days. We've also seen the Bank of England finally reverse that misguided rate cut in 2016. Mr. Carney virtually had to be dragged kicking and screaming to reverse that rate that, that rate cut from, it, from just over a year ago. So base rates are now back at 0.5%, but it was a very dovish outlook for the Bank of England. And I think the concern now is that if we break below 130.5 on the pound, then that could undermine the uptrend that's been in place for the past few months since those March lows. It's certainly worth keeping an eye on that on the 100-day moving average. What are we looking forward to for the week beginning the 6th of November is two more central bank rate meetings. And this time we're looking over in Asia, particularly at the RBA where interest rates are currently 1.5% and where the Aussie dollar is currently looking as if it's finding a little bit of support down just above the just around about the 76 area. So if there's a particularly um, bullish outlook from the RBA um, with, with the meeting coming up next week, then we could see a move back through the 77.50 area Back towards 78 but it does certainly does seem to be the case that the break below this very very key level here around about 77 40 77 80 could well be precipitating further Australian dollar weakness we really do need to see a move back above there to really target a move back towards 79 it's also a big week for the New Zealand dollar as well that's taken a bit of a battering over the course of the past few weeks with the advent of this new Labour government that's just come into power. There's a little bit of concern that they might look to change the mandate of the RBNZ. RBNZ base rate is 1.75%, so we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that. And in particular, this very, very big support level around about 68 cents. 
I think if the RBNZ keeps monetary policy unchanged, which again I think is highly likely, it's really then a question of how hawkish or how dovish are they likely to be against the backdrop of what it could be potentially a much more interventionist Labour government. So that's the key levels on the Kiwi dollar. Also worth keeping an eye out for the latest China trade data. Um, that's due out later in the week for October. Keep a particular close eye on the import and export data. If export data continues to hold up fairly well, then that points to a fairly resilient global economy. Certainly the data that we've been seeing coming out of Europe over the course of the past few weeks continues to be of the positive variety. So certainly I think the European economy is showing no signs of slowing down. That being said, unemployment in pockets still remains very, very high. Um, so that's likely to be a pressure point going forward. The inflation, the inflation picture within the European Union still remains fairly modest. And I think that's likely to weigh on the euro um, for quite some time to come, given the fairly dovish ECB rate meeting that we got last month. A couple of other things to keep an eye out for this week. Some important UK uh, manufacturing and industrial production data, which is due out of the back end of this week that could get that could give a decent indication as to the direction of the pound at this point in time certainly if we look at euro sterling in terms of where we could go to next we did see a very dovish hike on the back of that bank of england uh, rate meeting which could suggest a little bit of a short squeeze back towards around about the 50 and the 100 day moving average and that is a very very positive candle there so we could certainly well see a squeeze back to 90 but I would be very, very surprised if we saw much of a move really significantly above that. Other things to keep an eye out for this coming week are the latest half yearly numbers from Burberry and Sainsbury's. And we've also got quarterly updates from TripAdvisor and Macy's. That's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.